What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're jumping in the next one on our Aurora journey. You already know we love watching her interview because she's always just her quirky self, and we absolutely enjoy it. Get up and show enemy all the love in the world. Aurora on What Happened to the Heart, the new album that's coming out. Uh, let's jump into it. Check it out together. It's coming at us from Maria. Definitely appreciate you. It says, apathy is the biggest enemy to progress. Let's go on the journey. See what we got. Hit the like button. We're going to cut it into two pieces. Definitely, if you want to finish watching it, go watch it on Enemy's channel today. What's your favorite bit of sign language? Oh, um, in Norwegian, this is bullshit. I know that is bullshit. I don't know if it's the same of, of, of the world, but it's really nice. And I, I really like the word communication possibilities. Because <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> What I say? Hi, I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching Enemies in Conversation, and we're back again with Aurora. Hello. How are you doing today, Aurora? I'm doing very good. I'm really tired, mm -hmm. but only in my body. My soul is awake. The sun is shining. Our souls are awake. Oh yeah, it is. I haven't even. Yeah, it is. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. It's finally happening. <laughs> We can all go uh, pull our dirty bodies out of the caves of depression. Um, but yes. I guess you spend uh, quite a bit of time in London now, right? Yeah, I do. I don't know why. I think I just, I feel, um, I can feel the pressure now more and more of living in small p spaces when I grow larger. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to go somewhere. I think I like, yeah, I enjoy going to the big, big cities <laughs> like London. Yeah. Um, but it's been a couple years since we last spoke, just before the release of The Gods We Can Touch. Oh my God, is it that long? Yeah, two years. I think it was the top of 2022. <gasps> oh yeah, I had my antler, my jellyfish hair then. Yeah. Good times, Andrew. Good times. Good times. <laughs> we missed the jellyfish hair. I like the jellyfish hair. Life been since then? Life has been... All over the place, hasn't it? I've been touring the world once since then. And I've made a new album. A new child. So it's been, it's been very full. And how was it? I mean, because also fans have recently got their hands on this book, The, the Gods We Can Touch. Yeah, book, I wrote a fucking book, didn't which I? Which is beautiful, <laughs> you fucking did. I mean, did. what made you want to kind of add this extra element to kind of the universe of the album that fans can kind of get inside. Well, per, I always write books available now on PVC2. No, oh, is that a channel? I don't know. I always write a book, Andrew, for every album. Mm, because when I write an album, it's not very random. It's very like big for me. And I like to consume, be consumed as much as I can buy it, because making albums is the only thing in life that brings me true joy. <laughs> so I love just be doing as much as I can, you know. I paint a lot, I have hundreds of paintings from every era, and I, I have written a book for every album. The three first I haven't released, I might one day, if people want like a whole collection. I make sure the books are made the same, so there's none. Like, so one book won't come out and it's like shorter than the others and you can't stack them. <laughs> I hate when authors do. I hate when books don't stack up the right way, especially books from the same series. Do that. Mm. That happened to me once and I almost killed myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I really love, I really love it. There's so much, it's so hard when you have so much to say about something and you really want to say it right. So you want to learn every angle about it and the history about it, and then you want to philosophize, which I always think is a word, I don't know if it is, mm -hmm. but you want to philosophize about it and just really figure out how to do it satisfyingly good and beautiful, you know. Um, so I love just reading a lot and researching a lot, especially with the gods we can touch, which had a lot to do with religion and history and spirituality and as we very well know. And people, how we, how we deal with it. Um, the big question, the big questions needed a whole book mm. to kind of answer. Um, and I, I'm doing, I've done the same for the, this 
newer child mm -hmm. that I'm boiling. So what happens to the heart? <laughs> album number This new five. child that I'm boiling. Well, it is four technically. Yeah. In my heart is album number five, but it's yeah. chapter four because one chapter had two albums. Yeah. Step one and step two, which was so hard to explain <laughs> when we talked about it. But this is chapter number four, kind of album number four or five. Depends who you ask. But yeah, what happened to the heart is the name of this album and this book as well. And it's um, it's a question I'm I've been pondering a lot lately. Yeah, especially the last four months. It took a lot of writing. Mm. Mm. Well, let's start with the kind of the launch single, the next single that fans are going to hear, which is some type of sorry, some type of skin. A beautiful yes. song, absolute banger. But it's got that lyric in it. Um, we're good people and we both deserve peace, as difficult as that seems. I mean, that lyric really seems to speak quite powerfully to, to where we're at right now. Hmm. Yeah, because we are. It's, it's such a simple thing to say, I, I found, but so necessary, even though it shouldn't be. We're good people and we, we deserve peace, which we aren't, we aren't being given now in this world and I think when I first began writing um, this chapter I was looking at the history of the heart and kind of how we have what the heart has been a symbol for you know even before we knew about the anatomy of a human uh, like scientifically as we do now we talked about the heart and the core people knew a long 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 time ago that the emotion is here, love is here in the chest, family is here, pain is here. And we've known this for so many years. And in ancient indigenous cultures, the heart was a symbol for spirituality, the gate between us and all like, like interconnectedness, us and each other is like a really big thing. And then the philosophers came, like Aristotle and P Platon and all of those guys, and they stated that the heart was a pump. To uh, no, the heart was a blood maker. Mm. No, the heart transfers oxygen, and the heart became more and more a medical thing. And in 2022, all the indigenous leaders of the world they gathered together, with no true attention from the world, but they gathered together to plead to the world and, the, and to the way we, we rule our world, the way politics work these days. I think it's obvious by now that if you look around, you'll see that the world has become a less caring place, has become a less sympathetic and empathetic place. Everybody is kind of so busy and caught up in the bustle of things that we don't take time to look around we don't take time to see our neighbors we don't take time to be connected to one another divorce rates are at an all-time high even men and women who are married don't have like for some reason we don't connect anymore what's happening where are we falling off on that's what i'm saying aurora is like one of the most magical creatures to me because she it's almost like she has sympathy and empathy for everything that's going on and you can see that it's legit on her face it's very very real the things that she feels the pain that she feels for the earth and all of the things that we're doing to it the thing the things that she feels for humanity and all of the things that is happening to us how we're evolving or de-evolving or to that we are just acting with our mind we aren't acting with our heart at all and that moved me so much so that kind of Instig instigated? Yeah. I said a word? <laughs> oh, what a day. <laughs> but yeah, that, that instigated the whole process. These indigenous leaders pleading for the world to put the heart back in the way we do things, which we aren't at all anymore, especially the people on top of it. It's almost like they know uh, the world is going to end. So they don't care. we care about doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. But it's not true. But yeah, what happened to the heart have been is the most important and beautiful and sad question I've ever wondered. 
in my life. And that kind of it, more questions came up, right, as you went on tour, and um, you started to meet like female leaders, people you describe as like women with true knowledge in Colombia. Um, started asking real questions about kind of where we're at and why we're here, right? Because mm. it is very, it's hard to talk about like when the world has grown so accustomed to being apathic, and we're so the truth has never been easier to share. But the truth hasn't been easier to manipulate either, ever. And AI was created without our consent. <laughs> We've, nobody asked us, the people, if we're ready to have something that big being thrown upon us. And now so many things are going to change, which I don't think we can yet grasp because of that. Another true form of power to manipulate people and to embarrass people, to lie, to... There's so much that you can do with it that's dangerous. Yeah. I think people are so used to just being over flooded by misinformation and information. And sadly, we're looking at our influencers and celebrities to tell us what we're supposed to mean about <laughs> political things instead of reading about it and listening to true experts on the matter. And of course, I'm very vocal about things, so I do think it's important to, as a person with a voice, whatever, to show people what you stand for. But to be this, be the only arrow for people to show them what they should mean, that's dangerous yeah. as hell. So I'm really concerned, but I have a lot of hope, but I'm really concerned about just the state and everyone's necks are fucked everyone hurt is hurting everyone is tired and depressed and apathic and kind of nihilism is being very fashionable to kind of joke about and suicide we're kind of like oh just i don't know we have lost touch oh, Lord, she explains it in such a way that everybody can understand it that everybody is who she says the things that we're feeling other doesn't feel tired and a little bit weary at what's going on in the world who like it just seems like there's so much chaos how do you ever get it back in order how do you ever return it to a loving caring place we are we're fed with so much information that's why i don't touch politics i'm not here to steer you here or there I don't believe that any of them have our best interests in mind anyway. I don't believe that the best people for the job get put in the positions or even get put in a position where they can get to the position. I don't believe that any of that's true. Everything's about control and everything's about keeping people scared and keeping people divided up and breaking that connection that we have with one another. And it's heartbreaking. It's truly, truly gut-wrenching and heartbreaking to wake up every day and all you see is all of the terrible news on the television that happened. When's the last time you saw some good news? That's why we try to keep the positivity going because we need outlets here and there of positive information. We need outlets here and there of people that give a damn. Aurora, that's one of the things that she's helped me be better at is caring for other people and kind of trying to put myself into their situation to see what it's like. To try to get into someone's head and see what it is that they're going through. To actually care about what it is that they're going through instead of just saying, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm fine. Everybody's saying that now. I'm fine. Everything's great. Oh, it's a great day to be alive. Like, it could be worse. Nobody's really into opening up anymore to one another because of how you're going to look at me, how you're going to judge me, what you're going to think about me. And I can't stand that. I hate the way the world is going right now. As I've said for many, many, many years, <clears throat> but again, I'm kind of just, we have really lost touch with something we used to have that was really beautiful with us. Yeah. Well, that's it. The last time we spoke was kind of, post-Covid and, you know, it was post 
everything that happened around George Floyd, COVID also made people ask a bunch of environmental questions and how we're together and how we relate with each other and the earth and stuff. And you said it was encouraging at the time. You said it was always a good thing when the oppressed aren't the only ones fighting and the privileged are starting to fight as well. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of progress. Do you, how do you feel about that progress now? I feel like because of the over, over flood of information, like we aren't meant to look at the genocide happen for four months on our phones before we go to work. Because of the overflow of information, our attention span is getting it's much shorter. And I think we know how to care about something for a little bit. And then we kind of lose touch with it again. And our ability to be persistent about the progress we feel like we deserve is also weak, mm. which is understandable. I'm not blaming us for that. It's a very natural reaction to where we are at as a species now. But then I think we're still being forced to become apathic. Mm. And apathy is the biggest enemy to progress again. But I feel also like in the shadows, what is not on the news, there's so much good things happening and the world being on li literally on fire right now. If it's global warming or injustice or slavery in Congo, or the way they're being forced to mine or war that nobody can stop. <laughs> and people that can, they, they won't because war is business also. I feel like amongst all of that, there are a lot of good things happening too, because people are proving that we are tired of peace, basically. We want more than that. We want real change and liberation mm. and real progress. Because what, what was peace for me and you here in London was not peace for so many out there. So I'm kind of tired of peace and speeches of peace because we deserve more than that also. But yeah, I'm, that's why I need to write a book, another <laughs> book, because yeah. I'm, it's all, yeah, it's full, filled with... I will read that us. book. <laughs> well, did you find any answers on the record when answering that question, what happened to the heart? And what else kind of did you touch upon in kind of following that thread? I kind of did, because in the album, at one point, it gets a little ugly and it gets very harsh and it gets very uncomfortable, I guess, before it breaks apart. And then in the end of the album, there is a insight and truth that you need to go mend all the wounds you didn't acknowledge for all these years your own or like our wounds as a common group of people um, and I think that's what needs to happen I think something needs to break apart a bit before we can truly if we are given the chance to build up something new again who knows where the world is heading you know the least we can do is to just keep being in touch with each other and being in touch with ourselves. I think why, that's why this album, like the first thing, the blood, the second one, the conflict of the mind, and the third one, some type of skin, it's all very bodily things, I guess. Yeah. The album is very based around the human and where within us the, huma the, the soul of humanity is hiding. But I think the more we take care of ourselves because now we're being kind of we're stuck in pain and many of us don't have the energy or the courage to even begin doing the small things that can make us feel so much better on a daily basis doing small things in life that even just like remembering to drink enough water each day will eventually make you feel better and it will eventually show you that the small changes you do, <clears throat> they make a very big difference. 
And it's all about just this very small things we do every day to each other and to ourselves. Because yeah. imagine being a human today, you're on your phone, disconnected, being lied to, being manipulated. Then you see what's wrong with the world, or you think you see it, and then you don't know how to do anything about it. So you kind of escape into something else. And then you are hungry and you feed yourself with poisonous food mm. that either inhabits the pain of the animals we are torturing to make the food or the weird things from the factories we don't know what are, which makes us sick. Then we go to the doctor and we get medicine. We don't even know what works because it's more mm. about selling the medicine mm. from the brand than it is to actually make the human better. Yeah. She's saying yeah. years worth of things all at once and it's so damn true. Imagine living in that world where everyone who's supposed to feed you, help you, talk to the truth to you, is just constantly bringing you into a system so they can earn money. Is it about, is it so simple? Yeah. I don't know. It's like it is crazy being a human today. Yeah, so like the world's on fire, let's make some money while we can. Seems yeah, to be the vibe. yeah it, is, it is a bit like that. And people are getting so tired of celebrities, of their politicians, like just like the golden globes. Mm. Like the more and more people are getting tired of rich people celebrating themselves while the world is burning. Right there is where we are going to pause today's spot because I can think of no better spot to stop than right there. That was powerful as hell, and I definitely appreciate the request. Shout out to Maria. We will do part two tomorrow, but for those of you that want to go on and continue and see what Aurora said, well, if you want to continue today, the link's right there inside the description. Get over show in me all the love in the world. If you enjoyed it, go show Aurora the love, obviously. She just damn sure cares about the world and the inhabitants of it. Smash the like button if you liked it, the dislike button, but I won't believe you. Let me know what you thought about down below. Tell the next one about the combustible. You guys be happy, healthy, safe, but love you to the boo, the back, peace.